In this video, we're going to continue the conversation around pivots in a really practical way. We're going to talk about how to work with pivots when you have a data set that will be updated. What I mean by that is, let's say you have, in this case, we have this vehicle sales data, and, and, and we have another tab with an additional year of vehicle sales data. So we have the same looking data, basically, but in the first one, we have 16 and 17 as years, and in this one, we have full year 18 data. So let's say that we wanted to be able to create pivots that refer to this data set, but if we add data, they'll, all we need to do is just refresh the pivot table and it will know what we need. Now we can't do that the way we made this pivot table here because if you look at, if you remember when we created in a previous video, when we created the uh, data source for this pivot table, it's just referring to the actual pivot table that ends at uh, row 2347. What we want to do is have the pivot table refer to everything in this document all the way to the bottom of it so it has complete access to that whole field. Now we could just do that. We could select uh, just that area, but you'll also notice we have this dead row up here. Now in many cases you can't avoid that and you have a dead row up there and you need it for some reason. And we do have a source line here, but we can have that somewhere else. So what I'm going to do here is delete this to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to delete this and that means when I select my range, I'm going to go here change data source and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these entire columns all the way up to the last column of W I'm gonna hit OK and you notice right away it added this blank down here now the blank is because let me just fix these column widths a little bit okay now uh, this blank and let me make sure my column width setting is correct it is correct good now the blank is because at the bottom of the data set there are in fact blanks these are all blanks but we've included them in our pivot table now there are a lot of different solutions to this problem and I've looked into many of them but uh, obviously one solution is to not do what we're talking about not have all those rows added to the pivot table but that would be very awkward if you have a pivot many pivot tables referring to this data source you want them to just update automatically essentially when you add more data all you want to be able to have to do is hit refresh rather than have to redefine the range of the pivot table this is a much better way to make pivot tables in general actually even if you don't have a data set you're going to update because if you delete rows or make modifications to your pivot table range or move rows around you want this pivot table to refer to just everything that's in that data set so you want a better way to get rid of these blanks now one thing you might think of doing is saying okay I'm just gonna go here and unselect blank problem solved but actually this is not a great solution and to demonstrate that it's gonna take me a moment but I'm gonna show you right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this additional data set to my additional to my original data set just to show you what happens so I got this data set I'm gonna copy it and then I'm going to go to the bottom here. I'm going to paste this values, right? And then what I'm going to do, oh, you know what? Pasting as values loses some of that number formatting. So what I'll do is I'll just paste normally. And then what I'm going to do is, which I do every time I add data to a data set, is first I just double check that the columns are exactly the same. Now you may say, well, I know they're the same. I already know they're the same. I don't need to check. But actually, you should always check because you never know, especially if the data source came from some tool where the columns might have changed, maybe some system changed, or maybe you made a mistake that you're not aware of, or maybe any number of things could have happened. If these columns don't line up and you just delete this, you're going to forever lose the information about which column this data source came from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very simple formula, equals... All right, Excel kind of crashed on me there, but anyway, I'm going to say equals double hash this equals that. That's going to say one if they're equal and zero if they're not. Now I could do something similar. I could just do true or false like this equals that. That will provide a true. I could also do an if then statement. If this is true, then one, otherwise zero. However, the simplest way, the fastest way, is this very strange way where you do a double hash, you get rid of all this. What the double hash is doing is it's representing a true-false statement as a 1 or a 0. It's just a part of Excel's syntax. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to drag this across real quick. 
and I'm going to see that those are all ones, so I'm good. Now what I'm going to do is, just because I will always want to know uh, what field, what wave of data this came from, I like to add a little bit of formatting information to the data if possible. This is not always possible if it's a tremendous amount of data and you don't want to you know, uh, add too much information. But all you want to do is just change the color very slightly. So I'm going to go all the way to the end here, go all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to make it just a different color. That way I always know, even after I delete this, these rows, that this data set came from another source. There you go. I've confirmed that the columns lined up. I deleted the rows between. I know where this came from forever. I can actually filter this by that. If I go to filtering, I can, oh, it's being cut off by my thing up here, but you can actually filter by, um, just to show you, I'm gonna add some rows again. You can actually filter by color, right? You can sort and then you can also filter by color. Let me add some more rows. Yeah, that magnifier is very useful, but in this case, it's very much in the way. There you go. You can filter by color. So I can filter by this blue color and just look at that new year if I ever wanted to. I'm usually not gonna to wanna to do that. I'm usually gonna to wanna to just use the year thing here, which makes way more sense. But if I ever wanted to look at the different fields, let's say I added data multiple times to this document and I always colored them a slightly different color, that just gives me another piece of metadata that helps me track errors or figure out what went wrong if something is, uh, if there's some issue later down, later down, the, down, the, uh, down the way. So I'm gonna delete this row, these rows. Okay, great. Now, remember our pivot table that's referring to this? That should be unchanged, but when I hit refresh, all those refreshed. Oh, everything's fine, right? The new date is included, the new years are in, that's great. But actually, this is wrong. The reason it's wrong is because when I hit filter and filtered out blank, what actually I was doing is I was including everything but blank. Excel did not know that I wanted to filter out the blank. It doesn't really understand that. And you'll notice that this new item, Space Shuttle, which was sold for the first time in 2018 as a toy in this data set, is not selected. Now, if I didn't check this, I would have no idea that was the case. So we want a different solution for excluding these blanks. We want a solution that is much more flexible for any time new data is added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this filtering. And to do that, I'm going to add some, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here so I can see a little better. Let's add even a few rows. And I'm going to clear the filtering. And you can see blank is back, which is super annoying. But what I want to do is I want to create a filtering that says for these labels, if it does not equal, basically I do, I, I'm, what I'm saying is I only want to show it if it does not equal blank. So I'm going to go here, does not equal, type in blank. Now this problem is solved. Um, it's hard to show you now, but adding that data in, uh, space shells would remain. Now the only challenge with this right now is I can only have one filtering going on for this particular range, for this particular, uh, for, for, for the um, uh, product lines. If I add another filter, blank is back. What happened? What happened is it's basically only allowing you to do one filtering per range here. So uh, there is actually a way to fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the filtering again. I'm gonna put my filtering back. I'm gonna do that label filtering does not equal blank. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and go to pivot table options. And I'm going to go to totals and filters. And I'm gonna turn on allow multiple filters per field. Now, if I did say, hey, I only want to look at uh, ships, let's unselect everything and look at ships and planes, let's say. Uh, blank is not going to reappear. Even if I select blank, it won't appear because all along I have this other filtering that's also active, which is removing, only looking at things that are not blank. So I have two filters active. It has to pass through these two filters to be acceptable. And that solves this problem. Now I can add as much data as I want to this table, to this um, tab, if I have additional data sets and if it, whatever changes or whatever gets added. And this will uh, essentially still update with the new items, but still remove the blank issue. 
Okay, uh, there are actually several solutions to this problem. This is the solution that I found that I think is the most effective, but I would love to hear in the comments if you have another solution or if any problems or questions arise out of using this solution, we'd love to hear all about it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and look forward to teaching you more about pivot tables in future videos.